Okay, so we are interested in trying to better understand the long-term prevalence as well as consequences of chemotherapy-induced peripheral neuropathy. So we were fortunate to have a large aggregate data set um, of baseline information from women who were enrolled in clinical exercise trials in order to determine what is the prevalence of chemotherapy-induced peripheral neuropathy in women who'd already completed their chemotherapy. And were there functional consequences of that neuropathy many years after they were diagnosed and treated? So we had an aggregate data set of about 678 women who had enrolled in our clinical exercise trials. We asked all of these women whether or not they had symptoms of peripheral neuropathy. And then according to whether or not they reported yes to that question, um, we compared many different outcome measures. So both objectively measured physical functioning, self-report physical functioning, and their report of whether or not they'd experienced a fall in the past year. So what we found were that among our sample, 45% of women still reported some level of peripheral neuropathy. Women in this study were on average six years post-diagnosis. When we compared their objective and self-report physical functioning, we found significantly worse functioning, both using objective tests as well as subjective tests, in women who still experienced some symptom of peripheral neuropathy. So specifically what we found were that women uh, had more difficulty rising and sitting from a chair. They had more difficulty doing a simple physical performance battery that looked at how quickly they were able to walk, at how well they were able to rise and sit from the chair, as well as a simple balance test. And women who had neuropathy scored significantly worse on that test compared to women who didn't. Women with neuropathy also reported significantly worse physical functioning. They perceived that their functioning was impaired. They also reported that they had more difficulties with activities of daily living compared to women who were asymptomatic. And women who still had symptoms of neuropathy had nearly twice the rate of falls compared to women who didn't. So 31% of women who had neuropathy experienced a fall in the last year compared to about 19% of women who didn't report neuropathy any longer. So in conclusion, what we really confirmed was that um, uh, chemotherapy-induced peripheral neuropathy doesn't necessarily go away after treatment has been completed, and there are functional consequences of this that actually put women at higher risk of poor long-term outcomes. So higher rates of disability and higher rates of functional limitation as well as falls are associated with higher risk of death, higher risk of admission to nursing homes, um, and a loss of independence. So the take-home message from this study is that we need to do a better job understanding more about peripheral neuropathy, um, assessing it early, being able to help limit the progression of the neuropathy and potentially even the onset of the neuropathy, and then also to start um, referring women to rehabilitation as soon as neuropathy symptoms start to present because exercise or targeted physical therapy could actually be a pretty effective way at still allowing women to maintain their functioning, um, maintain their physical abilities, and limit the rate of falls, even if we can't necessarily make the neuropathy go away.